Mm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Hey you, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be cooking ketovore meatloaf. No, I haven't made this in a really, really long time and I'm not sure why because we all love it. Uh, there's many ways to do this and I'll talk about that as we walk through the process. I'm also gonna have this written up on the blog. So I'll put the link to the blog in the description for those of you who just want a written out recipe and don't wanna watch me cook and all that stuff. I know a lot of you are like that, but for those of you who are visual, I'm gonna do the video as well. So yeah, let's get started. All right, for my meatloaf, I'm gonna be using three pounds of meat. Now you can do all ground beef. I've made this with venison. Um, but today, today we're gonna do a little mixture. So we're gonna do ground veal, uh, ground beef. This is Kobe ground beef. And this is ground lamb. Like I said though, you can use any ground meat from the cheapest ground meat on the market to grass fed, grass finished. I just got this on a whim to see if it would make it taste any different. So this is um, no hormones, no antibiotics, no preservatives, no artificial ingredients, no animal byproducts. These are all um, good quality meats. So first we're gonna get a big glass bowl and you're gonna go wash your hands because we're gonna get our hands dirty. Now you don't have to, you can totally do this with like a spatula or something, but we're gonna mix it with our hands. So let me get my bowl. You may not know this about me, but I'm uh, very short and I have to use a stool to get into pretty much every cabinet in my kitchen. This one ought to do. All right, so I'm gonna rinse this out real quick. I'm gonna scoot you guys back a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna unwrap all my meat and put it in the bowl. Okay, now we're gonna wash our hands again. So, to your meat, and you can use less meat. I have a full house today, so it's my parents and me and Ken and Beckett. So we, that's why I'm using so much meat. But you could definitely do this with two pounds or even one pound, depending on your needs, you know? So just accommodate for that. And a lot of my recipes are very subjective. You can tweak them very easily, add more, add less. Uh, if you wanted this to stay carnivore, you totally can. You can leave out, I'm gonna be putting onions in here. You could leave out the onions and this would be a totally ketovore meatloaf, a few other things too. Now we're gonna add grated Parmesan cheese. Um, the kind I'm using is from Sprouts. It's organic pasture raised grated cheese. Of course you could use any Parmesan cheese. This is just the one that I'm using. And this is a six ounce, hang on, my dogs went in. So this is a six ounce container. I'm gonna dump all of it in because I am making a large amount of meatloaf, okay? I'm gonna kind of crumple it up. You can tell this is the texture. Uh, I prefer this texture. You could use shredded. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It just is something to add to the bulk of the meatloaf and add flavor. So we're gonna add that in there. And I'm also going to add pork panko. Uh, you can buy pork panko on Amazon. I'll link it below, or you can just crush up pork rinds. It's the same thing. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is pork panko. And it's just crushed up pork rinds. Nothing fancy about it. I like these because they're a bit fluffier, so I feel like they do better in recipes. But to crush up your own is totally fine. I'm gonna add a cup of pork panko. You can add more, you can add less, depending on how you want it. I'm also going to add a half a cup of coconut aminos. Like I said, you can leave this out if you want to. I just feel like it adds to the flavor. My old recipe before I was keto, uh, I put Dale's seasoning in it, and this is a pretty good alternative to Dale's. Now I'm gonna chop up a whole onion. You can use half an onion or no onion at all. It's totally up to you. And we're gonna put that in here as well. It's been a minute since I cut up an onion. I've lost my technique. I used to cut up, cut up an onion without crying at all. Oh my gosh. 
I knew I shouldn't have put on mascara today. Oh no. I'm literally, I have mascara running down my face. I'm gonna put three eggs in here. These are fresh out of the backyard, out of my chicken's butts. And so we're just gonna crack those, put them in there, and that's just gonna help our meatloaf stick together, just like in regular meatloaf. Now we're gonna mix it all up. I forgot to tie my hair up. Filming cooking videos looks a lot easier than it is. Let me just say. I also forgot to turn the oven on. Oh, that's cold. Okay, after we get all the ingredients well mixed with our hands, then we're gonna put it in a glass dish. You can use Pyrex or whatever kind of dish you like. I'm using a casserole dish just because that's how I like my meatloaf. Um, I press it in really well so that there are no gaps and everything like that and everything's packed down. Then I add a layer of Parmesan on top. Now you can totally leave this out if you don't want to do dairy or you're dairy free or you're sensitive to dairy. I just like to add another layer of cheese because it's tasty and we like it that way. So I would say I'd add about probably half a cup of Parmesan on top, but just eyeball it and do what you like. It's not a big deal. Do more, do less, do none. It's totally up to you. Then I'm gonna lay some bacon on top of the meatloaf. Some people cook their bacon first and then put the bacon on after the meatloaf is finished. That's totally fine if you wanna do it that way. I do it this way because then the fat from the bacon seeps down into the meatloaf, making it extra tasty. And I laid nine pieces of Peterson's no sugar added uncured bacon. And I just laid it on top no special way you could do a really pretty weave if you wanted to i did not <laughs> now we're ready to put it in our oven preheated to 400 degrees we're going to leave it in there for an hour and after that hour is up then we're going to turn the broiler on i put mine on 550 for five minutes and that crisped up the bacon really really well and there it is. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of fat in there. That's fine. When you cut your meatloaf up, it'll come out without all that fat on it if you don't want it, or you can spoon the fat on top of your meatloaf if you want a little extra tasty fat, uh, but it's unnecessary to drain it because you can lift it right out of there and it's fine, as you can see. How's it look? That's pooty. Right? Yeah, look good. at all that fat. Okay. Mm. Are Let's you see. hungry yet or well, no? I need a plate. Oh. <laughs> big, get the I big plate. I can do that. Oh my goodness. There we go. Oh, yeah. Everybody else is eating, right? This yes. is mine. Yes, that's all yours. <clears throat> mm. Look at that. Right? It's pre cut. Sorry. Oh, I should have told okay. you. Oh, okay. okay. I, didn't, I didn't think so. I did that so I could approximate, approximate like how many servings. And... Yeah. And this is 100% carnivore? No, it's ketivore. There's a little onion and oh, some okay. coconut yeah. aminos in there, yeah, but yeah. mostly, mm, mostly That would meat. be a good round one. Yes. I got you a fork. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Take a bite right here. Oh, you, you want to see, huh? Immediate okay. reaction. What if it's terrible? You want me to fake it or? No, yeah. you need to tell me. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's got lamb, veal, and Kobe beef. Mm. Three mm. pounds of meat, plus mm. the bacon. Mm. Parmesan, pork panko. That's really good. Right? Mm. I know. I was, I'm so excited. That's the first time I've done it with lamb you know oh man that's per the perfect blend right mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, dr berry approved i need some privacy 